it won't surprise bold and beautiful viewers or regular readers of this column to hear that this week's episodes were a bit of a mixed bag. Heaven knows there was not a lot of plot movement, but there were some very entertaining moments, such as, well, let's discuss. In true bold and beautiful fashion, Rich proved to be both the root of Taylor's problem and the only one who could help her heal. One session with Chandra and a quick dip in her healing sound bath put Taylor on the road to recovery. Call me crazy, but I'm not sure that snuggling in the lap of the person who has caused you so much pain would really prove helpful to the healing process, but hey Chandra knows best, right? After spying on this wildly intimate moment, Brooke finally found out what was going on between her former and possibly future husband and his former and possibly future wife. After hearing Taylor's diagnosis, Brooke got what had to be the line of the week. For your information she spat, I've had a broken heart many many times and nobody ever called it a syndrome. Touché Brooke. Touché. And bonus points for having Ridge recreate that sexy pose with you. That's showing him who wears the lingerie in the family, I mean it ain't called Brooke's bedroom for nothing, right? My favorite scenes of the week all happened in Thursday's episode, which featured a really fun script. If you're going to play the same beats over and over again, at least find a way to make them entertaining. For example, there wasn't a lot to the stuff, but watching the Spencer men together is always a blast. Bill's reaction to a working at Forrester Creations was perfect what are they gonna teach you to do, stitch a sequin. Hem a dress. But his disgust at his youngest son's decision turned to delight upon learning that the real reason he'd taken the internship was because of all the sexy women working at the fashion house. In the case of Will, the apple clearly didn't fall far from the proverbial tree. If there's one thing I don't quite get, it's Will encouraging Liam to pursue his feelings for hope while at the same time telling Dad Bill that he probably shouldn't do the same where Katie's concerned. Honestly, it's a good thing we got some entertaining scripts this week because storyline-wise, pretty much everything is a repeat. Not only are we obviously heading for yet another round of Brooke Rich Taylor, no matter what the participants say, but we're also playing a Hope Liam story, with Carter filling in for Steffi. That sounds weird, but you know what I mean. The big meeting regarding Hope's line worked because everybody played their part. Some may have seen Steffi's attitude as harsh, but she was in business mode, she didn't want to hear what might be, but rather what the actual numbers were. And Carter's cheerleading led to several folks eyeing him suspiciously and wondering if maybe there was more going on in his head than simply balancing the books. This was the same episode one mentioned previously, with the fun script, which included Hope saying to Carter, we shan't keep the queen waiting and then making a crack about Steffi and her guillotine. The court jester that being me was highly amused. I still can't take RJ seriously as a designer. Unlike Will, who feels like a fully developed character, RJ doesn't feel as if he has much of a purpose. Maybe the soon-to-arrive Electra will change that, although I suspect she's Will-bound. Someone needs to sit Liam down and talk to him about consent. The guy just goes around kissing whomever he pleases whether they're interested or not. First Steffi now Hope. Not cool dude. Every time Taylor says the initial diagnosis suggested heart failure and this being bold and beautiful, she says it repeatedly she comes off as flighty and irresponsible. Because instead of following up on that suggested diagnosis, she just decided she was dying and gave up thank goodness Ridge and his chakras came along. The bold and the beautiful B&B spoilers recap for Friday, October 18th, reveals that Steffi Forrester Jacqueline McInnes would opened up to John Finn Finnegan Tanner Novlin about Carter Walton Lawrence St. Victo coming to Hope Logan's Annika Noel rescue earlier. Since Hope's line was underperforming, Steffi thought Carter's passionate support of it was strange and made a prediction that something else was going on. In the design office on Friday's BNB episode, Brooke Logan Catherine Kelly Lang thanked Carter for defending Hope for the future. Hope eventually popped up to offer her gratitude as well, so Carter suggested a celebration back at his place with no interruptions. At Spencer Publications, Bill Spencer Don Diamant was surprised over Liam Spencer Scott Clifton, wanting Hope back and wondered how his pitch went. Liam admitted Hope didn't exactly go rushing into his arms, but he wasn't ready to give up. Liam confided in Will Spencer crew Morrow alone later, and said he had to show Hope that she was the only woman for him. Will urged Liam to make it happen before some other guy got to her first. At I.L. Giardino, Brooke gave Deacon Sharp Sean Cannon updates on Carter saving the day for Hope at the meeting earlier. Deacon was pleased over the news and suggested Carter should come in for a couple pizzas on the house. Brooke thought it was refreshing for Hope to have someone in her corner, since she was usually under siege at Forrester Creations. 
Carter's support was exactly what Hope needed right now. Thanks to some calls Carter made to get his place ready, it was all decked out with candles and a very romantic vibe. Hope approved and once again thanked Carter for stepping up for her today. Carter said he wasn't just thinking about what was best for the company. He also did it because he couldn't stop thinking about Hope. After Hope answered Liam's text about Beth Spencer Jordan Gracie, Carter admitted he knew that Liam wanted her back. However, Hope assured Carter that she turned Liam down and acted like it was better to keep raising Beth separately. Carter insisted Hope deserved all the beautiful things life had to offer. In Carter's opinion, it would be a huge mistake to go back to Liam before Hope explored what was out there and saw the opportunities that awaited her. Carter also reflected on how beautiful Hope looked back in Rome, so Hope praised him as well and talked about how easy he was to talk to. Although Hope wasn't proud of the year she'd had, she was a divorced mom who was doing her best. Hope still craved love and hadn't felt like she had anyone in her corner until now, so she appreciated that and her connection with Carter. Just in case Hope couldn't tell, Carter said he was crazy about her. Since Carter liked to make his intentions clear, he asked if that bothered Hope. Hope insisted it didn't, so Carter added that she was all he could think about. After Carter guided Hope's hand to his heart, passion ultimately erupted between them. Hope helped Carter undo the buttons of his shirt as they kissed, but Hope suddenly pulled back and said they shouldn't. But we could. A hopeful Carter replied as they looked at Hope lustfully. The bold and the beautiful spoilers say Hope will have to decide how far she's willing to go with Carter and how soon, so stay tuned 